One of our traditions at CBA with Beta, Beta Gamma Sigma is to recognize and induct a distinguished alumnus who has not yet been inducted into the group and demonstrated professional and inspiring achievements themselves and ask them to address our community here in the BGS ceremony. This afternoon, we will recognize our alumni honoree, Karen Rousey. Before bringing Karen up here to speak, let me tell you a little bit of the highlights of her professional success. She is a 2011 graduate of our executive MBA program, and she is the head of technology strategy North America at ThoughtWorks. She's also considered the world's number one expert on the Evolve team as she was featured in Inc. Magazine, Entrepreneur, Forbes, and Success. Her work as a chief technology officer and transformational digital leader have helped executives solve the most critical and strategic challenges facing companies today. As a certified coach, strategy advisor, and a certified change management expert, she has delivered undeniable results, transforming leaders, teams, and organizations for such clients as Apple, Google, Target, the Ritz-Carlton, Zappos, Amazon, and others. She is the author of an upcoming book and podcast entitled Unlock Your Team's Genius, Create Sustained Engagement, Extraordinary Performance, and Profitability. So please join me in a CBA round of applause as we introduce to you all, Kieran Rousey. Kieran, I turn Thank it you, to the view to you. Thank you very much. It's an honor to be here. Very exciting. Um, yeah, I'm honestly, I'm flattered to be asked to have been the speaker for this wonderful and hard earned occasion. I congratulate each of you and your family. Your achievements in the realm of scholarship, leadership, community service, and character are being honored here tonight by your induction into this prestigious honor society. An honor such as this is a wonderful way for LMU, CBA, and the community at large to recognize, celebrate the choices, and sometimes the sacrifices that you all have made in achieving this accomplishment. I believe that what should make you most proud is not actually the honor itself, but what it took for you to get it. Graduating at the top of your class, no small feat. Pulling some all-nighters, I imagine. Putting team success ahead of your individual success during a group project. Saying no, probably multiple times, to something you would maybe rather be doing because you didn't want to let your teammates down. The requirements for membership of this society in which you have excelled far exceed the academic rigor required. They speak to the importance of a few really important, I think, key themes, one of which is continued development of its members and lifelong learning. The second is fostering an enduring commitment to the founding principles and values around honor, integrity, pursuit of wisdom, earnestness, and service. Connecting members to each other and future opportunities, as well as igniting passion for excellence in business leadership so that members can change the world of business for good. These characteristics were not chosen at random. In fact, I believe they're at the core of a fulfilled and fulfilling life. They're at the heart of what will separate you from the rest, courageous, moral, and values-based leaders. I wanna pause for a second and just give you an opportunity to focus and reflect on your journey. What did you learn about yourself? What values has this experience reinforced for you? When you think about what you wanna to contribute to this honor society, LMU, CBA, your organization, and the world at large, I want you to think about the importance of aligning your choices to your values. In fact, I have a challenge for you to practice doing just that. And Dale, as a coach, I couldn't resist this opportunity. <laughs> I want you to write down your top three values. And for the next 30 days, this is probably the hardest part, before checking your devices, read them to yourself each morning. And then ask yourself, what do I wanna to contribute to my organization today? What do I want to contribute to the world today? And who do I need to show up as for myself and others to achieve my greater purpose and be of service to those that I lead? You see, the course of our lives, where we are today and where we could be in the future, they aren't really dictated by three to five, say, major choices that we've made or will make in the course of our life. The important thing to remember is that where we end up is the sum of many individual choices that we make each day. 
To that end, I encourage you to slow down just enough to create experiences in both your personal and your professional life that help build your legacy. You can't do this while you're on autopilot. You can't do it when you're distracted or unable to be present. In fact, the only way to achieve your greater purpose is to stay conscious. And in my experience, take small, very intentional actions every day guided by your values. A focus on values-based education and education of the whole person is what brought me to LMU and made my experience as a student and continued involvement as an alumni so special and important. My time in the executive MBA program taught me many things that have contributed to my success. Beyond the skills one needs as a business leader, it helped me to reinforce my own values. It helped me to align opportunities to my greater purpose. And it showed me what amazing things are possible when you bring your true authentic self to the table as a leader. Being here with all of you today reminds me of what it took to achieve the results I have and to be of service to others. And I didn't even have to do it during a global pandemic. <laughs> so I applaud you for that as well. I had an atypical path to success. I was adopted. I moved to the United States when I was 18 months old. I grew up in a middle-class family. I was an athlete. I was even challenged with an undiagnosed learning disability and struggled academically for a while. My parents, late sister and grandparents were my heroes and always worked tremendously hard. My mom grew up in Alabama, very poor, no running water, not even an indoor toilet. She skipped two grades, was a National Merit Scholar, did a triple major in college, was a Woodrow Wilson Fellow to Harvard, even got her PhD in three years before she was 26. She's the pioneer of the field of early literacy and childhood development and has dedicated her career to helping low-income school districts. My dad was an actor and a musician here in Los Angeles. He became a chef, even had his own restaurants in Chicago. Now he's a therapist working on programs that impact the lives of children and their families in New York City. My grandfather was a city planner, a philanthropist, and a wood sculptor and a huge supporter of the arts in Winston-Salem, North Carolina, where I went to college. My grandmother, also a therapist, saving lives, families, and several marriages um, in her hometown as well. And finally, my late sister, a pioneer in the field of women in engineering. All of this is proof that life happens in chapters. While the chapters may feel unrelated, they aren't, and I'll tell you how in a moment. When I was a kid, I found myself getting in trouble for doing things that were different, being creative and sticking up for others. Thankfully, I had always been resilient, self-directed and confident in who I was. I knew what I wanted and I went after it, although you know, not without some challenges and setbacks along the way. I started and sold my first business in high school. Following in my sister's footsteps, I developed a couple patents. I began a successful real estate investment trust in high school where we donate proceeds to different charities and academic institutions, such as this one. At 30, I rose to the level of being a CTO, running and consulting for Fortune 100 global companies. And early on, decided to join the service and I spent 20 years in the military in search and rescue, working events like 9-11 and the Boston Marathon bombing. Accolades aside, the lessons I learned during each of these experiences were invaluable and challenged me in ways that are important to who I am and how I approach the world. Those seemingly unrelated chapters I spoke about earlier, they're not actually unrelated at all. They were chapters of many people's lives who chose to do what they are passionate about, who chose to live by their values and be a force for good for others. So while I've had to persevere, create opportunities for myself, and in some cases, worked doubly hard to get recognized. I did it with an unwavering commitment to my values and to helping others be recognized, celebrated, and successful in the process. I check off, I would say, many of the uh, politically charged boxes, right? I'm female, I'm a minority, I'm gay, and I'm a veteran. I'm not who you'd probably typically see getting a seat at the table as a board member or having the opportunity to run a multi-billion dollar global enterprise as a CTO. That kid who used to get in trouble for standing up for others channeled that energy into being a force for good. So why am I telling you all of this? So that you can be conscious of holding the door open for others too. 
so that if you have more privilege than others, you don't just use it to get ahead yourself, but to take others on the journey with you. To be the voice for those who are oftentimes go unheard, to be an advocate for those who need it most. Is it easy or popular? No, but neither is having the moral courage to despite adversity and personal risk to act upon your ethical values to help others. I have publicly stood up for others facing discrimination, even when it meant I might get fired. I've returned bonuses to be given to people who needed it more. I've forgone salary increases during times of crisis, crisis during this last pandemic when it meant keeping everybody else employed. And I've been called to make difficult decisions, putting people before profit. Do the hard stuff. If it were easy, it wouldn't be so important that we do it. When you think about what it'll take to succeed in a post-pandemic business world, when you think about the challenges that you'll face, never lose sight of your values. Use moral courage as a guiding force for good and keep asking those around you how you can support them to be successful. While the pandemic brought on much volatility, uncertainty, and discomfort, it also brought a wealth of opportunities, a chance to be creative, a chance to reinvent or reaccelerate goals. All this to say, remember that you are on a journey, both internally and externally, that will lead you to a new growth and a new kind of wholeness. There are times that it might be a journey that you didn't want and that you didn't expect, but it's a journey nonetheless. Think of it that way. I think unprecedented circumstances are able to bring newness and opportunity if we're open to it. Years ago, when I worked 9-11, I had 48 hour shifts of digging bodies up and reuniting them with their families. There was a lot of devastation, destruction, and a lot of darkness. But through the ash that was a part of my experience, new life emerged, new buildings were erected and nourished by the very ash that brought that destruction. I feel like this pandemic in a lot of ways is very similar, a powerful image of the cycle of life. Your induction into this honor society, a powerful representation of the circle of your own life. Be a person of hope and trust your goodness. There are lessons to be learned in all of these circumstances and everything that you've just experienced, values to reinforce, and the importance of taking care of yourself and others with tenderness and patience. Each day, seek hope and honor hope and watch the buds of a new life form. Who knows what's waiting for you at the end of this journey? We've seen people and businesses turn upside down during this time, many of whom have risen to the occasion and been challenged to reinvent themselves, not just to survive, but thrive. Take every opportunity you have to ask tough but important questions that challenge yourself and those around you to lead with moral courage. Listen to understand before being understood. Open your heart to the voices that will speak to you with wisdom and honor. And as Jeff reminded me when I was in school and he was my professor, through each of these steps, operate from your best self so that you can be proud of yourself when each of these steps have ended. Thank you. <laughs>